billions run away from uh, these and many other uh, symbols because they are taught a lie that these symbols are satanic, evil, and demonic. Yet whoever is teaching them that or training them to think like that or preaching to them like that, whether from a Christian, Islamic, Jewish, or atheistic angle, is in love with money, with wealth. Do we know our God of money? Can you use other gods of money and wealth? Which God should you pray for to make money? Are Christians, Jews, and Muslims, and atheists following any symbols of wealth or driving cars with symbols of divinities? Do you know your own ancestral symbols associated with success, life, wealth, and fortune? Melanin dominant human beings are engaged in deceptive group dynamics, spiritually locked by religious or atheistic or scientific symbols, yet they don't know or they are not awake to that. You need to really understand how the Torah, the Bible, the Quran, or any other book or other holy books are used as powerful tools full of symbols that glue their followers into groups. What's wrong with this? The entire Judeo-Christian Bible work with subliminal symbols, numerology, and their purpose is to channel the believer or the follower's psychic energy into a secret world pool that is accessed only by the ruling elites. Whether you know it or not, you belong to a group that is where your human or psychic energy is being exploited or used in a group. That's why they use the acronym for team. Together everyone achieves more. But we know that there is a secret group that is at the top of the pyramid. Which says and repeats the statement that if we understand the mechanism and the motives of the group mind, it is not possible to control and regiment the masses according to our will without them knowing it. It is used in marketing, in selling, and in promoting certain ideologies and agendas, group psychology and group theory running through symbols and glued by symbols. The Bible is one of the most powerful subliminal tools that billions of melanin dominant human beings are unaware of. It uses reversed occult thought power and psychic energy. The powers that be work to reinforce the belief that the occult powers and other mind systems are nonsensical. They laugh at spirit, they laugh at the soul, and they say these things do not exist in order to keep the masses away from using and accessing them. Welcome to Marifado Family Network where we review some of these symbols so that you can channel your own car and your own bar, your own energy, your own spirit in a worthy group for the upliftment of yourself and for the upliftment of melanin dominant human beings. Remember, no human being has ever been on this planet or on the earth or shall be on the earth or is on the earth currently who is free. You belong to a group. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't know it. Maybe you voluntarily joined a group, maybe you have not. But if you have consciously joined a group, you must eventually know where your energy is going because you could be under the spell. You need to break the spell of that group. Breaking the spell means that you are able to know who is controlling history, that they can manipulate how you see the past and influence your present moment and your future reality. The entire Bible is an extremely powerful book. Subliminal tool, full of occult numbers, cryptic reversed messages, allegories, and stolen materials in a corrupted and watered down form that is dished to the masses. Whilst the kernels are kept by the elites. Therefore, to the believers, the Bible is believable. When your mental eyes 
are opened specifically by knowledge of your true and original history and your identity the spell is broken it will no longer have any effect on you you will then remember that you are engaged in a serious a mental and physical battle you must know the mechanics of how other religious groups cast and re-energize their spells so you will effectively use powerful symbols to have positive result for yourself concerning the powers of groups and mass mind the author colonel Colonel Arthur E. Powell in 1927 wrote the power of the united thought of a number of people is far more than the sum of their separate thoughts. So if you think you in a separate group, if you think alone, you have no power than when the masses think the same thing like what you are thinking. That is why the Eucharist that is followed by Christians and practiced by Christians is a very, very powerful subliminal tool. The idea that the words that Jesus spoke in John 6, that this is indeed my flesh, in John 6, 55, and this is true food, and this is my blood, and it is the true drink that you should drink, is not metaphorical. If you think it's metaphorical, you do not understand how this has been done. We know that though Jesus never lived, once you believe in him and see him and imagine him and pictorialize him and see the drama of the Golgotha and the cross, you are engaged in psychic and magic activity similar to witchcraft or passive witchcraft. In the Holy Eucharist, your imagined Jesus is literally and wholly present. His body, his blood, his words, his soul, his divinity is made alive by your belief. Under the appearance then of bread and wine, you believe. You are then encouraged not to do it in an unworthy manner. So the symbols that you are seeing, the symbols of the cross, the movies that you have seen, the documentaries, the arguments, have given this unbiblical entity force and a power. Fundamentalists and evangelicals in Christianity frequently attack the doctrine of the Eucharist as unbiblical. But they carry this false knowledge of Jesus' Last Supper and crucifixion in their heads and preach and teach it and they will not interpret it in any other way rather than literally. For us, what is powerful is that our ancestors and divinities are real. They lived, they left marks that we can go and point and pick and touch. All our ancient symbols are rooted in human experience. They carry a neutral, powerful psychic energy. It is the user of that energy who can direct it to be positive or to be negative. Yet, we want to share with you five most influential symbols in the universe. Then it's up to you to embrace their vibrations and it's up to you to use them in a group worthy of positivity, not negativity. The Ankh is on the top list. It is the key of life. It represents the concept of eternal life and the breath of life. The Ankh has been converted and used as a masculine principle full of theocracy, politics, blood and terror and war. Yet, it basically started off and is still symbolically a feminine principle. In love with nature, spirituality, and peace. The ankh can be used as a portal, as a mirror, to view and receive information from the divine realm, or to send messages to the divine realm. It is an amulet which you should wear instead of a cross, of a star, of David, or of any Masonic regalia. The ankh is worn for good luck, for fortune and to protect against evil spirits or 
bad energies. The eye of Oreso is the great protector. It has been incorporated in the Big Brother that you a lot of people watch today. It has been incorporated on the United States dollar as an authority, as a spirit. And those that laugh and say, ah, the occult is this, the occult is that, especially atheists and agnostics that think, ah, there is no divinity, yet they are using a divine infused currency. The eye of Oreso, he represents the divinity watching over you, spiritual guidance, protection, luck, and warding off the evil also represents your inner moral uprightness, protection, and blessings. Instead of having these symbols in your home, put the image of the eye of Oresu in your home. It is a controversial symbol, yes. Often at the heart and soul of conspiracy theories. However, historically, this has been and was and has always been a positive symbol with many, many variations in the whole world. Number three sign is the lotus flower, a symbol of awakening, a symbol of regeneration, a symbol of ultimate power, a symbol of purity, a symbol which shows that you can rise up, you can rise up and be resurrected. You have to grow these plants and keep framed pictures and images in your home, in your bedroom, in your office to give yourself power because it resonates with the sun. It also represents the river Hapri, so-called Nile. Because before the Nile reaches the Mediterranean, the Rakodziba, the name of Mediterranean is Rakodziba, it is shaped by its many branches into a lotus flower. These are the waterways from which the funnel is shaped and the fertile land is called the delta. And this is representative of our umbilical cord. It's connected to the source of life. That is powerful and this lotus flower should be in your home. Then the power of the infinity symbol represented by Uroas. And what is less known about this is that it is either a head coiled or earret risen. Both symbols represent without exception a regeneration, awakened state, and ability to come from nothingness to something. Because it represents your soul. So you should wear a ring or necklaces of this power. Because then it gives you that drive of infinity. The symbol of our endless lessons and incarnation. Number four, Nyunyute. Represented by uh, this uh, figure. From the pyramid text, we know that the goddess of plenty, of good fortune, and the like, subsequently, with no distinction whatever from reality to abstract ideas about wealth, money, and success, was represented and revered like this. Meet them and talk to them. Keep their images always alive in your brain as you plan your life. And then, as a bonus, we look at uh, the same principle, but now using a different symbol. Hecate, also known as the frog goddess, who was the goddess of fertility, childbirth, and a very important divinity because it represents the heavens, the seasons, and plenty, music, and a song. Could this be our divinity of money? Can this be used by any of us? Yes, definitely. Here it is used as an N or as a water jar or for display at home. So when you see some homes with these symbols, you must remember that some people know more than us and they do many symbolic acts. Now, while this, there was no I mean, God of wealth, power, and authority as a single one, like the Greco or Roman God Pluto for money, 
or the gods of money that we have dealt with. There was, however, a variety of different gods and divinities tangentially related to growth and exchange. We have already indicated of Urunyute, Hekaki, and Putare. We have Dedeni or Dedweni, represented by the baboon, who comes from the ball end, the lord of Farufu or Oxyras, who is the, in the midst of Hubis, Hani. Foremost of Nubre, Nubre is the old name for gold. The Lord of Nubre, the Lord of God. The Lord of Kush, Kush means spread everywhere. The youth of Upper Kamit, the ruler of Upper Kamit, religious ruler of Nubre, who is the midst of Abatone. This is one of the most powerful prayers that you can give. Our ancestors knew all this and uh, they knew that you have to take steps to receive communication from more spiritual symbols than merely three or five that we have given here. Therefore, we want to invite you that uh, this year, 6259, that is coming shortly, should be a great year for you to step forward into rapid personal transformation. And you have to invite the divinity for that, who will assist you in your transformation. Kepiri. Capri. He will do that with you. May the gods appear, our revered ancestors, spirit ablaze. May you be raised beyond these highest stars in this life as we pay homage and honor to all our revered ancestors and blameless divinities for this life. Amen. For more information, you can get in touch with us on joinatmarfado.com. This is your Hamanager Topi, Priest Rabbi Elem Tumizulu Kunikenim Jakan Jamskaban, saying there are more symbols than what we have given. Use them, employ them, for that is our power.